Hi, everybody. Jack Byer here with NASA Space Flight. Welcome to our second SpaceX Boca Chica weekly update. As always, photos and videos this week were provided by the one and only Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal, as well as NSF forum user Nomad. Thanks to both of them for providing this unparalleled coverage. All parts of the facility have been buzzing with activity this week. First up, SN5. Preparations for static fire continued, with some welding being done on the mass simulator. Check out how they're using cardboard and duct tape to secure their work from the wind. There was also an attempted fuel pump test on the 17th, where the vehicle was pressurized, but no obvious testing took place beyond that. The next road closure is July 20th as of this edit, but it changes so much it's probably different by the time you watch. If SN5 is able to static fire its Raptor engine successfully, then SpaceX will attempt a 150 meter hop with it a few days later. The new high bay, which will be used to assemble super heavy boosters, is making rapid progress. The first level of the massive building is nearing completion, and crews are already preparing to begin work on the second. When finished, the new high bay will be 81 meters tall. That's nearly twice the height of the existing mid bay. We got some rare clear views into the fabrication tents this week and the goodies inside are tantalizing. There are two two ring sections, two three ring sections, and a four ring section, all visible in just one part of one of three fabrication tents. This could be enough or close to enough rings for an entire Starship tank section, which is sort of mind blowing and gives you an idea for the scale of activities in Boca Chica. Despite Mary's relentless coverage, there's still a bunch going on behind the scenes. There's also been various bulkheads spotted, as well as a LOX header tank. So we could be seeing a new Starship take shape soon. At the launch site, crews are continuing work on the foundation of the super heavy launch pad, a few hundred meters east of Starship's launch mount. We've previously seen pilings driven deep into the ground before being filled with rebar cages and then concrete. This week we've seen crews installing steel rebar as work on the pad foundation continues. A new launch mount, which is likely a spare should something go wrong, was completed and moved into the grass near the landing pad. I wonder if maybe this will be the mount for the new super heavy pad once foundation work is finished. Teams have also been spotted laying down gravel and dirt around the landing pad, which has been cleaned off ahead of SN5 hop activities. Back at the build site, SpaceX has stacked the first complete Starship nose cone since Starship Mark 1. Teams connected a nose cone to a five ring barrel at the windbreak on Tuesday, finishing what may be the complete nose cone section minus aerodynamic surfaces for SN8. Interestingly, the five ring barrel used was the same section seen damaged by wind in late May. SpaceX was able to reinforce it and was confident enough to use it as part of the nose cone. The windbreak, aka Small Bay, hasn't seen much, if any, action since Starship Mark 1 was finished. So it seems that SpaceX has chosen to repurpose it for nose cone assembly. Another nose cone has been spotted nearby with a third being finished and rolled out of Tent 3 on Saturday. Next up, NASA Spaceflight forum user and Boca Chica local Nomad spotted an interesting piece of hardware in the scrapyard. A two ring barrel section with the words heat shield painted on the side was moved there late last week. 
The bottom ring on the stack is covered with what may be mounting points for heat shield tiles. These are the most mounting points we've ever seen on any ring, so it seems like SpaceX may be preparing to build starships with heat shields soon. On the northeast side of the build site, towards the village, work started and then finished on what ended up being a second parking lot. Very exciting. This lot is about half the size of the existing one towards the southern edge of the site, near Stargate. Currently, a large number of employees have been parking along the side of the road due to lack of parking spaces, so the new lot will help improve safety and traffic flow. On the opposite side of the build site towards Brownsville, work preparing a different lot, a former gas well, is also ongoing, though its intended use is currently unknown. The three large new tanks for the tank farm seen arriving last week are currently stored there. The aft fins from the Starship Mark I prototype have made an appearance this week. After the failure of Mark I in November 2019, SpaceX removed the aft fins from the damaged tank section and placed them in a field off Remedios Avenue. They've sat there for nearly eight months until on July 9th when crews moved them to the build site. On July 16th, they were further relocated to near the solar farm where they were power washed and had new mounting hardware installed. It is unclear what their intended purpose is, although they will probably not be used for flight. Two fins of a newer design arrived a few months ago and will likely be installed on SN8. I see a lot of speculation in the comments and on the forum that the Mark I fins will be used for some sort of gate given the new hardware installed on them. That would certainly be something. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and let us know what you think in the comments. We're still refining this format even down to what day we post, so suggestions are welcome. I've got a new mic coming in the mail, and we'll be tweaking this format as we go, making it better every week. Like and subscribe so the algorithm knows you like us. Hit the bell so you get notified when we go live, and consider becoming a channel member to support everything we do. All right, be excellent to each other.